So it was an interesting thing about much of also true literature. You have a ton of it, which is academic in nature. Much of it, fairly valuable. Some of it, complete horseshit. We have lots of ideas and opinions about the runes. Some of it, fairly valid. Some of it, much of horseshit. <clears throat> um, the messianic ideas that I see foisted upon Guido von List and some others are woefully out of place. It's just another rabbit hole to draw the intellectual down so that I know something you don't. But much of the literature of today is focused upon, and for the last, since it's been around, has been a response to or an allegation or some critique of modern events. And it's thrived to the certain point that it has because of the shallow expectations we operate under with regards to what we expect of spiritual development because we don't know what we expect from our spiritual development. We are fascinated by the imagery of Hollywood. <sighs> We are our minds are engaged in the cinematic events of the Lord of the Rings and Dungeons and Dragons and the many books and the fantasy and and the history and Vikings and all of that holds a certain sway over the passions of the community, if you will. Even the staunchest folkish individual who would proclaim racial purity or some other shit like that, which go for it. That's what rings your bell, go for it. But our literature in that, in this world of Austria, has largely been academic or in response to any of the cultural or societal influences that happen to be present in the day, in the day that was written. I'm just as guilty of it as everybody else. I think I'm less guilty of it because I've gone stanza by stanza through most of the lore and given an op option or opportunity of how you might use that best. <clears throat> Not to justify a position, but how you might use it to move forward in the world. <clears throat> this, this, even the idea of, I, I saw this is a case in point. It would be very easy for me to go on and do some things because I heard some guy talking about the All Father and blah, 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 and not the sum father. And I thought, hmm, what an arrogant Christianized concept that Odin might usurp the creator god of peoples from Central or South America or Africa or Australia or <coughs> Indonesia or Southeast Asia. What an arrogant Christianized idea that the all father <coughs> might represent everyone. Now, if you decide to follow a path, you decide to follow a path. It's all there is to it. Go for it. Uh, the self-aggrandizement that comes from individuals that wish to denigrate the efforts of others to do that, or the righteous indignation of individuals that wish to, to justify and show how right they are because these people, hey, that's just fucking asinine, but whatever. Do we really think that any of that's going to give us a foundation for spiritual growth? <clears throat> How confused must we be? How shallow must this toe dipping of the toe into the water, so to speak, how shallow is it that we might consider that some of the best literature written is in response to or to antagonize or to some societal or cultural issue that seems to be most prominent of the day? or the ramblings of a fucking lunatic, many of whom died in fucking prison. What should we do with that? Do we, are we brave enough to take the cursory look at, um, this is largely, this is nice, this is interesting. I like it. It, it. it feeds something that I need, but there's no depth to it. There's no depth to it at all. Separate mind. It's all interesting to know, isn't it? It all makes us feel as if we're valuable in the new path that we've walked upon because we know something, but 
what fucking good is it? I don't think people understand what I mean when I say that because the people that listen to me, I still see them doing it. So what would it look like? I talked about it last week. When the body is broken, when the heart is broken, for sure, and the body is broken and unwilling to move forward, it is the mind and the spirit which moves us forward. And if the mind is shattered, it is the spirit and the heart. And if the heart is broken and the mind is given up, it is the strength of the body and the spirit. And if the spirit is broken, well, the body, the heart, and the mind have a lot of work to do to get out of the way to let it back in. This is what we face. These are the kind of things that we ought to be considering. We have people that are languishing in some kind of pain that they're covering up with all kinds of things. All kinds of things that mean not a hill of beans when the chips are down. And yet to convince them of this fact, why well, you would think you were stealing their firstborn. So when do we as a community develop the courage to begin looking at what we read as something that's worth reading? I see these books listed on here, some of them for hundreds of dollars. And I've read a good portion of them. And I can tell you assuredly, save your money because they're horseshit. They're largely stupid. You probably will never read it again. And the only thing you'll be able to do is say, yeah, I got suckered out of $100 to buy that book. And I couldn't finish reading it because it was too stupid. I see that with the contemporaries of my day. Now, when that fails, something interesting happens. Well, the more intelligent and hustling style of individual begin to understand, hey, I've got a confused crowd of people here. I bet I can make some money off of it. I'd love to make some money off. Don't get me wrong. But for the life of me, I cannot stoop down to feeding those societal and cultural issues that everybody else wants to enjoy because it makes them feel powerful and feeds their ego and they can indulge in righteous indignation and be more important than the next guy because they know something or they pay attention to this or that or some other fucking horse shit. Be easy to do, sell out. No, I'm convinced that within these tales, however unreliable some dickhead might have told you they were, within those tales, there is something that when the body can no longer, and when the heart is broken, and when the mind is hurting, when you're faced with the most complex of problems or the loss of some aspect of love in your life has devastated you or your body is simply too sick to do what it needs to do. In those tales, we might find that thing that most heartily feeds the spirit we need to move forward in the world that is to come. No magic, no magical symbol. Just a strong person, a strong man, a strong woman putting one foot in front of the other with the faith of their ancestors behind them. You're going to argue with somebody like that? You're going to tell them how much you think you fucking know? He'll be discounted and summarily dismissed. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot you were there. You may, you may go now. Be a person of faith not a person of something you think you fucking know. So I'm telling you right now, the world is so populated with half-truths. Anything you, anything you think you positively know and understand, you might want to examine it again. Because I can assure you, it's been postulated by someone with an agenda and populated by someone that needed to control. 
neither of them were interested in building something that fostered your faith to become a spiritually empowered individual. You brave enough to follow me? Give it a shot.